numbers group and this numbers here. Then what else is the other account that is affected if we paid employees? Well, it's not an asset. It's not a liability. It's actually an expense, which in this case is under owner's equity. So expenses here is the other item that happened. Expenses are going to bring down owner's equity. So if this side of the equal side went down and this side is the other side that's affected, it must be a negative 600. And if that happens, then this should be green because we're back in balance over here. That could be a little confusing because expenses are actually going up, but they're bringing the accounting equation of owner's equity down in this case. If that is confusing, then of course it's a lot less confusing if we do cash first because then we can see that this must be going down in order for our accounting equation to remain in balance. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the balances in there in E7. I'm going to say zero and practice the tab, which is two keys under the escape. Tab, tab, zero, 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 tab, 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 zero, and then enter brings us back down. Now we've got this balance is where we started before this C transaction. Then we have the C transaction. Then we're going to record the new balance. If we did that in a calculator, I would say it would be the 110,000 minus the 600 because we paid cash. It should be 1094. Once again, we're going to do that with a formula in cell C8. So we're going to say this equals, I'm going to put the 110, which is in C6 plus uh, C7. Now you might be thinking, why is it a plus when we're doing a negative number? We're trying to do a subtraction problem. Why did we sell C6 plus C7? Because that's a negative number. So this really says, take what's in cell C6 plus the negative number in cell C7. So it's 110 plus a negative 600. And that should give us what we want. Now if that's confusing or if we went the wrong way, I could delete that and just say, okay, what if we went the wrong way? And we said this equals this cell minus this cell because we think it's a subtraction it is a subtraction but when i select enter we can see that it went the wrong way again we don't have to do the math in our head to see that it went the wrong way it added them when it should have subtracted so we can say okay it went the wrong way why because it said this number minus a negative number two negatives are a positive so we're going to say okay i'm going to delete that we're going to say equals this plus this and in this particular worksheet where it's always going to be a plus going through here because the negatives are going to be represented by a negative sign within the number so then we're going to do this all the way through them in cell e8 i'm going to say this equals this cell e6 plus e7 tab tab this equals uh, g6 plus g7 tab tab this equals i6 plus i7 tab tab this equals k6 plus k7 tab tab this equals M6 plus M7 tab tab. This equals O6 plus O7 tab tab. This equals Q6 plus Q7 tab tab. Notice it's a negative number again. This equals uh, S6 plus S7. Now if we look at our ending balance, we could see that if I highlight these, the assets added up to 1094, 1094. If I add up this side, liabilities and equity, that adds up to 1094, 1094. If we were to add that up in a calculator, note that we have a negative sign there. So if I'm looking at this side of the equal sign, of course it's zero plus zero plus 100,000 plus 10,000 minus 600, because that's a negative number. That's the 1094, the 1094. All right, so now we have this transaction here. Also note that this brought down net income because it's an expense, brought down net income from here to here. All right, so now we care about this column, the balance, plus what happens in D to the new balance. We don't care about anything that happened above that as we are recording transaction D, which says, receive cash for work that will be done in the future. So first question, is cash affected? Yes, we received it. It went up 15000 So we're going to go and sell C9, C9 there. We're going to type in 15000 no commas or anything, and enter. That's the first account that's affected. What other account is affected if we received cash? Why did we get it? Well, you might think, well, we got it because we're going to earn revenue, which is revenue there. But in this case, even though we got money, we're going to earn revenue in the future. So under the revenue recognition principle, we don't recognize revenue when we got the money necessarily. We recognize it when we earned it. Usually we earn it before we get the money, but there are many situations where we might get a money before we earn it. We might get a down payment or something like that before we actually do the work. So 
In that case, we're going to have to record it as unearned revenue, which is a liability. Why is it a liability? Because if someone gave us something in the present and we didn't give them anything, then we owe them something in the future if it's a business transaction. And therefore, we owe them either our service or the money back. That's a liability, something that we owe in the future for something we've received in the past. So that's going to be the 15000 there. That'll put us back in balance. Then we can put the zeros through here. So we got EFS 9, 0, tab, tab, 0, tab, tab, 0, tab, 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 0, tab, tab, 0, tab, tab, 0, tab, tab, and 0, and enter. Now we have the beginning balance and what happened. Therefore, we're going to add those two up. If we were going to look at that on the calculator, of course, it would be the 1094 plus the 15. We should get the 124.4. We're going to do that with a formula. So we're in cell C10. We're going to say this equals what's in cell C8 plus what's in cell C9. Then I'm going to select tab. So we're going to say tab, tab. Then I'm going to do this all the way across, even though it has zeros. This is what's in cell C8 plus what's in cell C9, tab, tab. This equals what's in cell uh, G8 plus what's in cell G9, tab, tab. This equals what's in cell I8 plus what's in cell I9, tab, tab. This equals what's in cell K8 plus what's in cell K9, tab, tab. This equals what's in cell M8 plus what's in cell M9, tab, tab. This equals what's in cell O8 plus what's in cell O9, tab, tab. This equals what's in cell Q8 plus what's in cell Q9, tab, tab. And this equals what's in cell S8 plus what's in cell S9 and enter. Now if we highlight these again, from here to here, that adds up to 124.4. 124.4 is in green. This side of the equal sign adds up liabilities and equity. 124.4, 124.4. So we can now see that we are in balance. We now are looking at this balance plus what happens in column E, then to the new balance. We don't care about anything other than those cells as we record the transaction in E, which says pay cash for utilities 750. So is cash affected? Yeah, it went down. We paid it. So I'm going to go to cell C11. And we're going to type in a negative in this case with a minus sign and then 750 and then enter. And once again, it formats it with brackets. We didn't put brackets in there. We typed a negative sign indicated by the formula bar there. But it puts brackets in there for us. What's the other account that's affected? Well, we paid utilities. That's not an asset. That's not a liability. It's actually an expense, which is going to be part of the equity because it's on the income statement. It's way over here, the utilities. So I'm in cell S11. And once again, it's going to bring equity down. So we're going to say this is a negative 750 and enter. That should put us back in green zeros there. Then I'm going to put the zeros all the way across. I'm in E11, zero, the tab, two keys under the expense, tab, tab, zero, tab, tab, zero, tab, tab, zero, tab, tab, zero, tab, tab. tab zero tab tab and zero and enter so now we have the previous balance we have the activity we're going to then record the new balance here if we did that with a calculator it would be for cash 124.4 minus 750 should go down to 123.650 if we put our cursor here and we said this equals in cell c12 equals what's in cell c10 plus what's in cell C11. Once again, we might think that it's going the other way. If I hit enter, we can see that, okay, it's subtracted. That did what we wanted it to. Again, if we went the wrong way, I'm going to delete that. And if I said this equals this minus this, because that's a double negative, it would make it go up. Again, we don't need to do the math in our head to see that it went the wrong way. If something went the wrong way, then we go, ah, well, I'll delete that. Then maybe it must be equals this plus this because it's plus a negative number then enter and say ah that looks like it's subtracted so that looks like it went the right way i'm gonna do that all the way through i'm gonna say this equals this plus this tab tab 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 this equals cell s10 plus s11 and enter 
So we got one more transaction. Now we can see that we're in balance. If I highlight these, we're at 123,650. If we highlight the other side of the equal sign, which are liabilities and all of equity, that equals 123,650, 123,650, 123,650. Notice the 750 brought down net income indicated here because it's revenue minus expenses. Then we can we have the new balance there plus what happens in F, and that will give us our final balance. That's the only rows we care about when we're talking about the final transaction, transaction F, which says paid cash for supplies 350. So is cash affected? It is. It's going down. So we're going to go and sell C13. Once again, I put the, the minus sign 350, then enter, formats it with brackets. We typed in just a negative number. Then we're going to say what other account is affected if we paid for supplies. You might be thinking it should be an expense. And again, if it was a small, if it was a very small amount of supplies, you would be right because it would be immaterial and we would expense it. But supplies is going to be our introduction to assets for the most part. So if, fly, if supplies are significant, then under the accrual principle, then they really should be recorded as an asset and then expensed over the time that we use the supplies. So in this case, we've got, we paid cash for an asset. It's an asset because we're going to use it in the future. It hasn't helped us generate revenue yet. Therefore, we're going to put it in uh, G13, 350. Then I'm going to put zeros in the rest of it. Zero, tab, 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 zero, 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 tab, tab, and zero, and enter. Then I'm going to sum these up. So once again, if we looked at our calculator for cash, we know that it would be 123650 minus 350. We know it's going to go down. So if we put our cursor in cell C14, equals this and remember you want to say plus this because it's plus a negative and enter if that gets if you're confused on that you can say well did it subtract or did it add it subtracted we went the right way and then we could say this equals this plus this tab tab this equals uh, g12 plus g13 tab tab this equals g our i12 plus i13 tab tab this equals K12 plus K13, tab, tab. This equals M12 plus N13, tab, tab. This equals O12 plus O13, tab, tab. This equals uh, Q12 plus Q13, tab, tab. And this equals the S12 plus S13. Then if we highlight this on this side, the assets add up to 123,650. 123,650 liabilities and equity add up to 123,650, 123,650. This is the effect on net income.